This is Optimal Startup Daily, episode 286, How to Set Financial Goals for Your Small Business, by Robert Steer with goodfinancialsense.com. And I'm Dan, I am your host and narrator here at Optimal Startup Daily, reading to you each and every day, including weekends and holidays to help you optimize your business life. And I've got a new website to feature for you today. I'm gonna tell you more about the guest writer, Robert, along with uh, Jeff Rose, who's the creator of Good Financial Sense, right after the reading. But for now, let's get right to it as we optimize your life. How to Set Financial Goals for Your Small Business by Robert Steer with goodfinancialsense.com. Not even the smallest of small businesses can thrive without setting realistic financial goals. A set of financial goals is like a company's roadmap, always providing a frame of reference for where the business is and appears to be going. It enables business owners to put each day's actions into context and make decisions in accordance with a broad vision. If you've decided to start a small business, there is no better time than now to begin the financial goal setting process. Sadly, the apparent difficulty of small business accounting scares many entrepreneurs away from doing a real thorough job of this. What follows are some practical steps that will demystify the process. A lot regular time to set and adjust your goals. Despite the obvious importance of financial goal setting to small business success, it's easy to neglect in favor of other seemingly more urgent tasks. Getting a new product out the door, signing a big client, or eliminating corporate waste can quickly take precedence over far-off financial goals. Therefore, it's critical that business owners allot specific, regular times to both set new financial goals and review progress on existing ones. Like any other business task, financial goal setting is unlikely to get done without a firm date for completion. Nor does this need to be an especially complicated system. Something as simple as agreeing to review company finances each Monday for two hours might be all your small business needs to get and stay on track. Set smart goals. That said, It is not enough to merely spend regular time sitting around and theorizing about financial goals. To truly get the most out of the exercise, strive to set SMART goals instead. As goalsettingguide.com explains, SMART, S-M-A-R-T, is an acronym for Specific, Measurable, Attainable, Realistic, and Timely. Using this criteria, it soon becomes clear that vague goals like making a lot of money are totally insufficient. Same goes for far-off goals, like start taking out dividends by next summer. These types of goals are unhelpful because they express what you hope will occur without specifying in any detail how it will happen. A smart goal, in practice, might be something like double our sales by the start of the third quarter using weekly split testing of ad copy and improvement of our follow-up sequence. Consult your numbers. Smart goal setting demands that your actual numbers, rather than future, hoped-for, dream scenarios, be used as the starting point. You must accept the current reality of your small business as portrayed by your cash flow, the income statement, and balance sheet. If you're new to the business world or have been neglecting company finances up until now, these documents may be unfamiliar. Nevertheless, they are critically important and foundational to small business goal setting. Moneyinstructor.com offers a sample income statement, while accountingcoach.com provides a sample balance sheet. Compare yourself financially to competitors. While it may be impossible to know exactly how competitors are doing financially, it is generally common knowledge what the profit margins, labor, and production costs in most businesses are. This too should be incorporated into the goal-setting process. Do not look at your company as though it exists in a vacuum. It can be disheartening to learn that competitors are currently more profitable, but it is also an opportunity to reflect on why and how they got to that point and how you can too. Create action plans. In accordance with the SMART goal philosophy, it is necessary to create specific, detailed action plans for how all goals will be reached. Once a goal has been set, move on immediately to delineating the necessary tasks. If new advertising copy needs to be written, Make whomever is responsible aware of this and provide a deadline for completion. If customer support is a bottleneck, decide what needs to change and who will carry out the bulk of the work and when it needs to be done. Never be content to just set the goal. Always follow through. Document progress. Once the action plan is in place, document all progress made in implementing it. Task spreadsheets often work well in this regard. Simply create a shared spreadsheet in Google Docs or a similar service with the following headers. 
task, date posted, responsibility, date due, done, comments. Insist that anyone with a role to play in carrying out company financial plans use this spreadsheet to record what they are doing. This way, everyone can get a read on progress by looking in one set place. Don't get comfortable. Finally, there is much to be said for not growing complacent about financial goal setting. There is a tendency in new businesses to get comfortable with the status quo once a certain level of financial success has been achieved. Perhaps the company is turning a healthy profit, paying out handsome salaries to the owners, and showing no signs of weakness. Be that as it may, no business owner can take up an attitude of complacency for long. The financial goals must always be on where the company currently is, where the owners want it to go, and what actions are needed to get there. You just listened to the post titled, How to Set Financial Goals for Your Small Business by Robert Steer with GoodFinancialSense.com. Let's pretend for a moment that you're about to launch a campaign. It tested well, your entire team is happy, everything's going according to plan, except for that one thought in the back of your head. How do I ensure the people I want to target will be in the mindset to receive my message? The answer, LinkedIn. Because when you market on LinkedIn, your message reaches people who are ready to do business. And that means your advertising campaign will work as hard as it can as soon as you launch it. Now, you might know that we launched a workbook last year, which was our first physical product. LinkedIn had been a huge help with getting the word out for us. We were able to engage with potential customers that showed interest in our podcast by visiting our website in the past through our LinkedIn campaign. We also made sure to customize our campaign to generate awareness, which helped us reach some first-time listeners. Do business where business is done. Get a $100 advertising credit toward your first LinkedIn campaign. Visit linkedin.com slash OSD. That's linkedin.com slash OSD. Terms and conditions apply. And thank you to Robert. He is a staff writer at Business Owners Toolkit. Now, Business Owners Toolkit provides information on small business accounting, and they also provide useful tools for small business owners, just like the sample balance sheets mentioned in the post. As for the website, Good Financial Sense, by the way, that's C-E-N-T-S, That site was created by Jeff Rose, who is a certified financial planner and the author of the book Soldier of Finance. Jeff served in the Army National Guard for nine years and is now a husband and proud father of four. He previously founded Alliance Wealth Management back in 2011 and went on to sell it in 2019, and he's now focused on online education. We are a big fan of his work here at the Optimal Podcast Network, and if you are too, you can find more from Jeff on Forbes, Business Insider, and more. And of course, come by goodfinancialsense.com to show your support. And once again, that's Good Financial and Sense, spelled C-E-N-T-S. He's got a lot to offer on his site, and you can find articles covering making money, managing money, investing, and taxes, as well as guides on credit, debt, insurance, your home, and so much more. So again, come by goodfinancialsense.com to learn about all that. And thanks so much to Jeff for letting us share his work. And that's gonna do it for today. I thank you so much for being here, for being a subscriber, and for sharing it with friends and family when you get a minute. So have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you back here tomorrow, where your optimal life awaits.